Hey, shalom, shalom. Right back at you. We're finishing up with the uh, Matthew chapter 5, 17, 18, 19, and 20 verses. Okay? And I do, this is part 2, uh, 18, 19, and 20. So, heaven and earth is going to pass away before the littlest part of the law does. Um, if you teach people, to, if you break and teach people to break the least of the commandments, you'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven showing that the law is not a means of salvation. You can't work the law to get into heaven. And, and I, I do want to say this. That there are Christians who teach that Sunday is the day to keep Shabbat or to keep worship. As a, as a Jew, you worship every day. We don't have a special day that we worship. Uh, we do have a special day that we rest, Shabbat. Hashem put that in place. By the way, the Catholic Church can't change that. I don't care who they are. The other issue is that if you teach men to break this, to break the Shabbat, as the Seventh-day Adventists teach, they teach that anyone who breaks Shabbat will be cast into the lake of fire. They've taken the mark of the beast. Whatever. <laughs> it's, if this is not the least of the commandments, Shabbat and by no means is part of the least of the commandments, but teaching them to break it, they're still going to get to heaven if they believe in Messiah. They're not going to be so good. They're not going to be so great. It's not going to be like they're going to have a high position in the kingdom. They're just going to make it. Now, some people are just fine with that. They're like, oh, I made it into the kingdom of heaven. And they're fine with that. Uh, one Talmudina of mine said, I'm not fine with being the garbage sweeper. That's not why I want to make it to heaven. Uh, we all want to do the best we can here and be rewarded for that in heaven so we can give our rewards back to Messiah who lays them at the feet of the Father. Why is this section important? Because those four verses, those four verses make it evidently clear that the Torah is not done away with. You are obligated to keep the Torah. You're not obligated to believe that the Torah saves your soul. That's just foolishness. No Jew has ever believed that. No Jew has ever taught that. And Messiah made it perfectly clear. The Torah is our relationship book with Hashem. How do I walk in this relationship with Hashem? If... Uh, there was a special lady friend out there that I know. If she was to give me a book that says, here's what I want, or if she was to come to me and say, uh, I, want to, I want to be married to you, tell me, give me an instruction book on how to be the best wife to you. That's what Yeshua, that's what Hashem has done. When he gave the, the scriptures, the Torah, the Tanakh, the Kedavim, the Brechadesha, he gave us an instruction manual on how to have a loving, intimate relationship with Him. Okay? I know that every bride out there would go to their groom and say, give me that special book on how to have a great relationship with you. And, and to be honest, in this relationship, men would do the same thing. They would go to their wives and say, honey, I want to please you. I want to have this deep, intimate relationship with you. Give me the secret book. Well, that's what the scriptures are. The scriptures are his instruction manual to us, which is a better interpretation of the word Torah, not law, but instruction. Instructions to us on how to have a relationship with him, with our fellow man, and even with our spouse, and even with our fellow man who doesn't believe in Hashem. How to treat the Goyim, the nations who reject Hashem, or don't know about him. Verse 17 makes it clear. He's not come to do away with or to abolish. Okay, Verse 18 uh, says that heaven and earth will pass away first. Verse 19 says, if you teach men to do the, to break the least, you'll be least. But if you teach them to keep them, if you keep them and teach men to keep them, you'll be great. And verse 20 says, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes or the Pharisees, you will by no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about uh, imuna zadaka. He's not talking about faith righteousness. He's talking about salt righteousness, works righteousness. And, and people say, what is this? Faith righteousness works righteousness. Faith righteousness re de deals with our salvation. I have faith in Messiah Yeshua, and therefore because of my faith in Messiah Yeshua and the blood that he shed, I am righteous, declared right, before Hashem. Does that mean I can then go out and commit murder, adultery, rape, pillage, plunder? No. I have works righteousness, the way I live my life righteousness, okay? I have my faith righteousness, and I have practical life righteousness. 
how do I walk among my fellow human beings and show them that I believe in Messiah Yeshua correctly, the true ways to be believed in, and I follow his commandments. And I do that through obedience to the Torah. How can I know Hashem if I don't know his Torah? Okay? I believe this is for Catholic Christians. Be them Pentecostal, be them Baptist, be them whatever, even Seventh day Adventist. But if you don't obey the Torah, then you're really not walking in life righteousness and works righteous. People say, oh, by no works of the law shall any man be saved. We're not talking about salvation. We're talking about having a right standing in front of Hashem. We do that through the blood of Yeshua. I can't have a right standing in front of Hashem, even with the blood of Yeshua, if I'm committing adultery on my wife. I'm not married, but if I was married and committed adultery, or, or even better, I can't have a sexual relationship with a woman that I'm not married to and stand in righteousness before Hashem. I have to do teshuva, not only in my spirit, but in my life. Do you understand? The Torah can no wise be gone away, and I'll tell you why. When the Catholic Church, Catholic Christianity says that we're no longer under the law, we're not under the law. The law's done away with. No, that's a misinterpretation out of the, one of something that Shaul wrote. Okay, I'm talking about the words of Messiah, not Rav Shaul. May peace be upon him. When we see him in Shalaim in heaven, we'll ask him what he meant. He'll tell us what the Hebrew means, because that's what we'll be speaking. Messiah Yeshua's own mouth said, "He's not come to way to do. He's not come to do away with the law, or the prophets, but to bring them their fullest meaning. The heaven and earth will pass away before even the smallest part of the law falls off. That uh, if you." Break this law and teach others to break it, even the least of the commandments, you'll be the least in the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, it's not about works righteousness that gets you into heaven. And unless your works righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven. That's kind of big. Okay? Not only must your faith righteousness exceed them, and that's by putting it in Messiah Yeshua, but also your works righteousness. Many people say, oh no, that's working your way into heaven. No, that's saying if you think that because you have faith in Messiah Yeshua, you go out and commit all these sins, you're going to make it to heaven, think again. Okay? Don't think you can say that you're a, a Christian or even a Nazari Jew and go out and commit sin like there's no tomorrow. Because there will be and it will be judgment day. So, <laughs> hope I haven't rambled too much. I'm very passionate about this subject. I'm very passionate about this topic. Please feel free to comment, send me, shoot me an email, drop me a line, give me a phone call if you want to. Uh, let me know how I'm doing. And, uh, you know, just please understand that walking the Torah is not legalism. There are less Torah commandments than there are laws in the Catholic and Christian churches. So listen, this is Rob Yoshi. I'm saying Shalom Biahava. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be back soon with the rest of Chapter 5. Shalom, shalom.